this is going to be a player representing McDonald's. You might have seen him on TikTok or on our qualifier number two. Let's hear it for Anthony Chen. Yup, that's me walking on stage to compete in a $25,000 Fortnite tournament. And taking no mercy, even no mercy whatsoever. Goodness, Anthony Chin putting on a show. Practice, no worry. I know, it's crazy. Let me catch you up to speed. Oh my God. Every year, DoorDash, the food delivery app, hosts a tournament called the Battle of the Brands. And pretty much a bunch of fast food chains just get together and they each select a tribute to fight for the $25,000 grand prize. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, except no one dies, which is good, I guess. This year, we've been drafted by McDonald's, and they are flying me out to the PAX West convention in Seattle to compete. Now, the thing is, every year, the game that they play is different, and this year's game is Fortnite. And I have never played Fortnite before in my life. Let's go catch our flight. I feel like I've been traveling so much this year that I'm kind of like numb to it, but I want to be able to look back on these trips in the future, which is why I'm, you know, recording these vlogs and I hope you guys enjoy these videos as well. Today, we are headed to Seattle and it'll be my second time there ever. However, the first time I was there was probably a decade ago with my family and to be honest, I don't remember much. At the airport, I grabbed some snacks for the flight and my go-to snacks are most definitely number one, peanuts. These are a must-have, but uh, the time that they sell at the airport is always so expensive. I usually also get like some sort of candy and I saw these sweet tarts that I've never seen before, so I got some of these to try. Finally, I did get a turkey sandwich because I didn't eat dinner yet and I wanted something to snack on, but I'm not gonna lie, I literally ate like half of the snacks and then I just knocked out for like two hours, but it was a short flight, so it wasn't that bad. Hello, it is me. Uh, welcome back. We just landed in Seattle and it is currently 12.44 a.m. Today is Friday, September 1st, and the convention actually starts in the morning today, so we have a bright an early day. However, I just wanted to update you guys on, you know, the flight and where we're staying. The flight was good. It was like two hours, uh, nothing special. I actually knocked out for like an hour of it, which was very surprising. But we are currently staying at the Seattle Grand Sheraton, which is a hotel in Seattle. It is actually very close to the convention center, which I am actually pretty grateful for. Uh, that means we don't have to wake up too too early but i believe tomorrow's schedule is actually some content capture so they're going to take some pictures and maybe some videos and then i actually have the rest of the day free uh, to roam around and see the convention and see seattle so i'm gonna be meeting up with a couple of friends uh in seattle actually which i'm actually very much looking forward to so i will be taking you guys along hopefully you guys enjoy this very short kind of casual vlog and i'll show you guys what my experience is like in seattle playing in the twenty-five thousand dollar fortnite tournament stay tuned oh my god i need to shave okay good night day two in seattle day one of pax west i've never actually been to pax west but i've heard a lot about it so i was pretty excited to go and see what the convention was all about today was the day before the tournament but we still had to go in and get a bunch of media work done so if you're curious on what esports events are like behind the scenes you're in the right place. My call time was at 10.30 a.m. and the staff showed me around the production set a bit before leading me to the green screen room. This was like a tiny little room where they set up a bunch of cameras just to take videos and pictures of all the contestants for promotional media assets. Hi, my name is Anthony Chen and I'm repping McDonald's for DoorDash's Battle of the Brands Season 3. Not gonna lie, I've had to do this before for a couple of other events that I have participated in, but I will just never get over how awkward it is to stand in front of a green screen and just read out lines and take pictures. I do wanna give a huge shout out to the staff though who were running the production because they were super professional and they made everything go super, super smoothly, so seriously. Thank you very much, and without you guys, I don't think this would have 
even gone as well as it did. And actually, afterwards, the staff gave me a few goodie bags to take with me, and this included things like candy, postcards, a personalized t-shirt, was there like a bucket hat, and you know, just a bunch of other really cool stuff. So once again, Thank you very much to the DoorDash staff as well as the PAX West staff. You guys were amazing and you guys made this such a cool experience to be a part of. Just finished up in the green room. Uh, we did all the filming and recording that we had to do for their promotional assets, but uh, I'm actually now on the way to meet a friend. It's around 1 p.m. so we're gonna get some lunch and then after that maybe walk around the convention and take a look at Seattle. So uh, today's been good so far. Let's keep it going. I've been good. I've been missing Anthony Chan, pro Fortnite player for the last two months. I've just been thinking about his insane Fortnite moves. Every single time I close my eyes, I just think about mm, Anthony Chan cranking 90s. It's insane. Anything you would like to say to the people? Uh, uh, so. <laughs> for lunch, we ate at Rondo's Japanese Kitchen, and honestly, this place was pretty good. I ordered their bento lunch special, and surprisingly, it was reasonably priced, the portion sizes were huge, and I mean, just look at this. This is some of the largest cuts of sashimi I have ever seen, except for Japan. But We split a matcha parfait for dessert, and though I'm not a huge fan of matcha, this one gets my approval. After lunch, we decided to head back to the convention center and just take a look around. This was both our first times at PAX West, so we didn't really know what to expect, but I had a good time. I think PAX West is definitely a bit different than the usual anime conventions that I'm used to attending, but it was still cool to be able to see all the booths and exhibits that they had. There were a ton of big brand name companies set up with large booths, but there were also a ton of smaller indie games showcasing what they had. Some of my favorite booths there included Clash of Clans, if you're in the clan by the way, uh, sorry, I quit that game, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, and even King's Isle had a booth. If you don't know what King's Isle is, it's the developer of an old MMORPG game you may have heard of called Wizard 101. This is such an old game, but I played it religiously throughout my childhood, so it was just super nostalgic to be able to see a game that I haven't touched in a decade at like a convention in 2023. A few other games that caught my attention were Pacific Drive as well as this one cute roguelike game called Garden Story. I think I might play some of these games when I have time back at home, but in the meantime, it was just nice to be able to try them out. After the convention, we decided to take a look around Seattle since technically this was my first time there and Jason's not from Seattle either, so. We walked down to Pike's Place, which is a famous farmer's market, and even though it was only 5 p.m. when we got there, the stores were already closing, so. Bit of a bummer, but still cool to see the area. Underneath Pike's Place, there's this famous wall of chewing gum that people apparently like to visit. Not sure why, but honestly, it was a little bit disgusting and there were bugs everywhere, so I, out of the goodness of my heart, could not recommend going. I also got to see America's first Starbucks, but the line was super long and honestly, I don't even drink Starbucks, so I don't know why we went, but we decided just to walk down a block to a different Starbucks and just get our drinks there. Goodbye, Jason. I love you. Have fun. Stay Yo. safe. And he's gone. After Jason left, I went to the Yard House for a YouTube mixer dinner and I got to meet a couple of really cool people. Honestly, I'm really glad that I had the day to just hang out with friends, explore Seattle, and just enjoy the convention because who knows when the next time I'm gonna be there is, but tomorrow is where the fun really begins. Hello everyone and welcome into DoorDash's Battle of the Brands Season 3. Hi, my name is Anthony Chan and I'm ready for McDonald's MVP for real. Got great aggression coming out from the If you see me in the future, please. And we've got Anthony Chen going to be coming in. And Anthony Chen adding to that team. Walking to the tournament, I was feeling honestly pretty confident, but all of that changed once we got backstage. 
I think something people tend to overlook when it comes to live events is just how different it can be compared to playing video games at home. When I'm streaming up my setup, sure there can be like thousands of people watching, but it doesn't really feel that way because I'm in my comfort zone, but here it's an entirely different story. Honestly, I was super nervous backstage watching the first four contestants get introduced and compete in the first event, but when it was my turn to walk out there, I had to leave all of that doubt behind. The tournament was set up in a qualifier style, so for this first day we were just competing for points to determine seedings going into the finals tomorrow. Since this was for points, we played a bunch of different mini games like, you know, obstacle courses, team deathmatch, and prop hunt just to name a few. I'm gonna be honest, I was actually super lucky that they decided to format the tournament like this since the entire first day was just things that didn't require a lot of Fortnite skill. Just finished day one of the tournament. That was seven hours of Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Slice is laughing in the background, but honestly, we did better than I expected. We are second overall in the rankings right now, but tomorrow is where it actually counts. We have the semifinals and the finals then, so I guess we'll have to see, but right now we are at Starbucks Reserve. Gonna get something quick to drink and eat, and then we have a very yummy hot pot dinner afterwards, so. Day one, over. See you tomorrow. Dawn of the final day. In the morning, I got food with my friend Young and we ate at a local beef noodle soup restaurant. It was nice to be able to catch up a bit, but to be honest, I was pretty nervous throughout that entire thing just thinking about the tournament. After we finished eating, we went our separate ways, and it was time to play Fortnite. And Anthony Chen, the TikTok star. I can't lie, definitely a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna do my best here, hopefully put on a show. I had done pretty well the day before and was coming in with the second seed, but none of that mattered today. Contrary to yesterday's mini games, today we had to play actual Fortnite. And the thing was, we could be eliminated from the tournament. And then we're gonna hit that knockout stage, Kelly, where Hopefully this one's gotta hurt yeah. for Anthony Chen. Player out. He doesn't have any shockwaves to try to get over, but he is able to. We started the competition off with a couple rounds of Battle Royale. And honestly, this is what I was most worried about. Not only was this the game mode that I was least used to, viewers also got to play in this. People who were at the convention and people who are watching at home could participate. This means that though there are a ton of people for you to eliminate for points, there are also a ton of people who will come and try to eliminate you. Since we were given points based off of not only eliminations, but also overall placement, my goal was simple, survive. He's sitting still, but look, Anthony Chen also on a sniper's Come That one, another big fight here, Anthony. He doesn't even know that he's there. So that's it, the fight breaks out. And he's coming out. Anthony is now just going to be running away, trying to use the tree's protection. I'm going to work with, and it's Anthony Chen who's got a... Where that 50-50 zone is going to be. Ooh, nice fire going to be going down, potentially picking up the elimination. Lines oh, up the shot, he's still getting shielded. No, Anthony Chen. Team McDonald's Anthony Chen is still off by this well. Player out. He doesn't have any shockwaves to try to get Anthony over. Anthony going to be trying to take him out. Hit the flick and a beautiful space. 22 seconds left, five players left. And no, Team McDonald's now switching point of view. With the remaining six contestants, they put us into three games of free-for-all deathmatch. This meant that all the players would be dropped inside a small arena and constantly be fighting. After five minutes, whoever had the most eliminations would win that game. The thing was, all of our points from the previous day, yeah, remember that like huge explanation that we had? All those points had been reset. That means purely based off of the results of these three games, the top three players would move on and the bottom three would be sent home. Eliminate other players and points are rewarded based on your eliminations. Assist and overall placements are also taken into account. This time, I tried to play a little bit smarter and make sure I didn't, you know, just jump straight into combat, but no matter what I did, I could not seem to break into the top three ranks. Leading just 
Yes, so easy to be a bit of a morale boost on the player right behind the light pole. That light pole is going to be destroyed, though, and King George is going to be... The odds of me making the final round were shrinking fast, but my one silver lining was the person who had placed third in the first game came in last this time around, which meant that I was just hovering below the cut. With only one game left to go, it was literally do or die here. If I didn't place at least third here, I was going to get eliminated. I don't know which way the zone wars are going to go anymore. Six and a half minutes left for the competition. Could give BTMC or Antony enough time, and Antony does in fact tie for first place, Ooh. but that doesn't last for long. Slides in up eliminations on weekend targets, but she becomes the one hunted oh. around here. So keeping it very close for herself, but it's just back and forth. No one is safe here. He wants to get that top three, but he's gonna have to fight for some of our competitors right now. He's at 24 points ahead of the rest. Anthony right now gonna be going down and now moves himself into third place. As we In that last free-for-all game, I would not be lying if I said I gave it my all. I don't think I've ever tried so hard in a video game before, but by the end of it, I had narrowly, just like barely secured third place. But we did what we had to do, and now there were only two people standing between me and the $25,000 grand prize. I was seated third, which by my calculations was pretty much where I expected to be, but seated second above me was none other than my roommate, Ed, who I know for a fact has been religiously practicing Fortnite three weeks leading up to this tournament. And of course, seated in first place was none other than Chica, a full-time Fortnite content creator someone who had gained over 1.7 million subscribers on YouTube from the game, and, and, I kid you not, has her own skin line in the game. For comparison, I have maybe, like generously speaking, 15 hours of Fortnite under my belt. This includes the eight hours that we had to play yesterday for the qualifiers. Things are definitely not looking great. The first player to two wins within these eight minute rounds will take it all home and of course earn that big paycheck. For the finals, the three of us were placed into a box fight, which is basically Fortnite's premier game mode of showcasing skill. As many of you may know, Fortnite is infamous for the ability to build, and if you've seen any of the clips floating around the internet, you know that when building is involved, things can get pretty wild. Since this was competitive now, we were actually given white noise headsets, which is actually what other pro esports players use when they play in live tournaments. Low key, I felt pretty cool when they made us wear these white noise headsets because it made me feel like I was actually a pro esports player even though I mainly play Genshin Impact, but... After they briefed us on the rules and what we would be doing, it was time to fight for $25,000. you away, so you are pretty far, so as long as she can continue to do just Here. that. It makes the combat happen a lot faster. Oh, look, Chica recognizing. Ooh. Quick build, though, coming out from Chica is pretty much just throwing Anthony. Like getting more. right back to the build. <laughs> and then they turn and fight no. for the final... Final bit of actually team up against her. Sticks it out and gets the Elon, but BTMC comes. So she can hold the lead. That'll be all she needs. But BTMC tries to get in the box. Too. They have been out. Out. Look at that. from behind, but you get very difficult. Very, very difficult. You know, heavily decided. Maybe it's not a uh, it does make sense to fight one another. We should see what we can. Final game. It was all tied up. Each of us had taken a map, and it was down to the tie. Two minutes of gameplay would determine who came out with $25,000. This was neck and neck. Chica led for a bit, then Ed was in first place, and I was always close behind. 30 seconds left, down by three eliminations. Everyone I see did. Chica and Ed duking it out from afar. I take a wild shot and somehow manage to hit Ed and take him out, down by two. I quickly swing my crosshair over to the left, and in a close fight, barely managed to take out Chica. Yes, that is Down by cool. one, 15 seconds left. Ed but responds like next to me. I'm low on health, but somehow managed to dodge every single shot from him. With the last bullet in my gun, yeah, right I take there. him out, and I'm tied for first place. Five seconds left, Chica respawns on my right. I swing my crosshair over, time is running out, and this is the final moment. I somehow managed to get a shot off. The buzzer rings with that wild, random 
last minute shot. I eliminate her. And in the tiebreaker round, I come in first place by one single kill. We've done it. I've won the tournament. I've won 25. You really, you really thought I won that? <laughs> oh man. No lie, before the final round even began, I had to have Ed come over and like help me change some of the settings in Fortnite because other than a YouTube video that I watched in my hotel room the night before, I had literally zero experience when it comes to building. Wait, just kidding. I think it's off off. I have off off on none. I think you already have it with turbo building. Oh no, I had to, I had to click each individual piece. Though. Have you tried clicking and dragging? Uh... To be fair, it was honestly not that bad of a loss. Chica did wipe the floor with both Ed and I, and she did win 2-0, but there were a few moments in the game where I was actually leading in kills. It honestly just makes me think that if I had just put, you know, a little bit more preparation and played Fortnite a little bit more before the tournament, maybe, just maybe things could have been a little bit different, but I guess we'll never know. In the end, I managed to play second, and you know, for a game that I had honestly never played before, in a tournament with such high stakes, and for it to be my first time playing at a live esports event, honestly, I think we managed to do a pretty damn good job. Give it up for all of our contestants participating in season three. For Josh Secchi and Baby Nikki. There's X Choco Bars, Burger Kings, King George, and Popeyes, Sylvie. In third place, representing Jack in the Box, please make some noise for the man with endless energy, BTMC. No way. Let's go, Jared. This is sick. Yeah. And it's time to bring out our silver medalist. Please make some noise for McDonald's and Anthony Chen. BTMC, would you do the honors to the roommate? You love to see it, Anthony. Make some noise for your champion, Chica and Taco Bell. Make some noise for Chica and Taco Bell. Just finished the tournament. We ended up in second place, which honestly, pretty good, uh, all things considered. I don't really play Fortnite, so I'm very happy with the outcome, and it was a lot of fun to do, uh, to play in as well. So I think this will be the end of the vlog. Uh, I'm just gonna go eat dinner, fly home after this, and hopefully take some time off uh, competing. I say competing like I'm a pro. Uh, <laughs> This will definitely be a memory that I will probably never forget. So thank you to those of you who did come out and watch me live and cheered for me. Uh, it was very nice meeting a bunch of you and I hope, uh, hope I made you guys proud. So thank you, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video probably.